Have you ever seen a 300 year old table? You have now, you're looking at it. It's a cricket table from Great Britain and it's a classic. So that's what we're going to make today on the American Woodshop, so stick around. The American Woodshop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Pro Tools, for tool pros. Rikon Tools. Woodcraft Magazine. Projects, plans, and web links designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood, home of Timberwolf Swedish Silicon Steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on. A table to share meals. A house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. Providing furniture to neighbors in need. You're looking at a rarity. This is a 300 year old table plus that I found at Patriot Antique Shop, Tip City, Ohio. Had to have it, thank you ladies. They talked me into it. I fell in love with them and this. And if you look at it, the construction's based upon a triangle, equilateral triangle. And then the legs are out of this world easy to do if you know the trick, which I'm gonna show you. And look at the grain on the top. It runs at 90 degrees to the grain on the triangle shelf. Now the circle top, it'd be criminal to use something new. So I always recycle furniture and I saw this in a burn pile and man, imagine my surprise. I roughed out a circle and this is what I ended up with. It's wormy chestnut. Now granted, this table is English U, all the way from jolly old England, Bob's your uncle. But with this one, what we're going to do is use a circle cutting jig to see how the top shapes up. So I'm so excited because it's rare to find chestnut like this. Now, we're going to use a circle cutting jig, work safely, read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with the tools and products you use in your wood shop. Now, we're going to cut this to the finish 26 and a quarter inch diameter to match the table. And this is the piece of plywood three-quarter inch with a pivot right on center. And look at that. Just had enough to get the job done. I rough cut that earlier. So now, voila, we're done. Back to the beginning. Perfect circle every time. Let me hit the brake on that. And let's lift this off so you can see how the jig works. You have to have a pivot point right on center, and that's what this drill bit is. I just drilled it all the way through the diameter, or the radius that I wanted for the circle. And you have to keep this edge square to the square of the table, and the point right here that it pivots on has to be right in the center of the gullet to cut perfect circles. Now, I'm going to do a bit of sanding on this, and then I'll show you how to do a resin pour so we'll get a smooth surface into those cavities. So silicone pad down when I sand, won't damage anything. Ambient air cleaner's on. This is on dust collection. I'm working with 100, 150, and 220 on this, working with the grain even though it's random orbital. I did split this in half and planed it down. That's why I'm going to sand this, get it perfect. Dust mask on, on dust collector. So I'll sand this down thoroughly and then tack it off and show you how to do a resin cast top. When it comes to finishing, a lot of people like to use epoxies now and I'm just bringing this up to the two to one mix ratio, two parts of A and one part of B, which is the hardener. And I know right on this mix bucket where that will be. And it's very important to read the directions on this. I'm right there right now and the mix is correct. 
I'll set this aside. No solvents in this, which is great, but I'm always working when I'm finishing in a very well ventilated area. Let me set this up safely. And now what I have to do, gently mix this. And I don't want to really bring up a lot of material on the side walls because that can change the mixing dimensions. And you don't want to do this vigorously because it, you'll get a lot of air bubbles in there. There's a chemical reaction going on right now, which is what makes this harden. Part A and B go together. And if you stir it too much, you get air bubbles. So now the other thing is, what I'm looking for is a color change when it starts to go cloudy. And it's not there yet. So while that's working, chemistry, isn't it crazy? What I'm going to do is show you my favorite way to seal off the top. I'm using packing tape, good stuff. And I go around this a bunch. And I made sure I tacked this off thoroughly so that this is clean, very clean. The reason I'm doing this so much is when I've done pours in the past, it's escaped the barrier. I don't want it to escape the barrier. OK, so that looks really good. That's half a dozen times around and even underneath. And I'm not worried about the edge and the crinkles here because that's all going to get sanded. So now, when we do the pour of this resin, it's been tacked thoroughly. That looks good. And we're going to brush this out. I'm going to get all this out. And I want to do this quickly because this will take some time to cure. That's enough to do this entire job right now. Get the extra out. I had a good measure on this. I know just how much to use because I've done this before. And you want to really brush out quickly so you don't get stains in the wood that discolor it. That will even out very nicely. It already is. So I'm working from the center out to the edges. That way I'm going to get a uniform coat. And while this is curing out, once I get this brushed out, we're going to go work on the legs, because that's the next part of this project. So just get this brushed out, and off we go. Now the key to this project is the legs. And that's at 8 degrees right there and there. Good angle gauge helps a lot to get those dimensions from the original. Now look at the end. That's called a rhombus, the end of the leg. And it all starts by first making two edges of a white oak three leg work pieces square to each other. That's what a jointer does. So I'm going to use the jointer now to square up two edges, two and three quarters by two and a half. That's key. So to do that, I'm selecting the straightest edge first. That looks good right there. And I'll join it using this mega jig right here that Larry Szymanski, a retired shop teacher, made for me. This is fantastic. Let's make those cuts. At the bandsaw, I've tilted the table and locked it so it's at 30 degrees. That's the key. That's a one setting. And then the rip fence here on the bandsaw is adjusted from the blade to the edge of the fence on the table. It's an inch and a half. Now I take the square now and I rotate it so I have two square edges against the fence. Two and three quarter dimension here is up. Turn this on, get the dust collection on, and I make the first cut, running the whole length of this, keeping it against the table and down to the center. This is a three-quarter inch blade. 
You'll see how this works in just a second. This makes the rhombus. Again, this is wide open. Now we're finishing the first cut. Turn that off. Hit the brake. That's good. Blade has stopped. Now, look what we've got. Take that away. And I rotate this workpiece 90 degrees. And now if you can look on the end, you can see that that gives us a perfect rhombus shape. I'll make that cut and then I'll take it to the joiner, join the edges that were cut smooth, and it's over to cut dominoes. I'm using the domino cutter and I'm going to swing the fence all the way up so it's flush. And I have my leg workpiece now clamped down to the bench and I line it up on my witness marks and I make a cut by holding the domino cutter straight down. And that is how all the dominoes are made. I just swing it around, made the other cut, made those up at the top for the top apron so that we can do this leg assembly, okay? Now, what we have to do is go over to the miter saw to make these compound cuts and also cut the apron work piece and the stretcher here. So let's head there. All the aprons and stretchers are cut at eight degrees, left and right, that's easy enough. You can check it with a bevel gauge, and that's perfect, no daylight. But now what I'm going to do is adjust this bevel to four degrees and lock it in, just like that. So I'm doing what's called a compound cut. And the reason I'm doing that compound cut for the dimensions of this leg is when it stands flat, it rakes and splays. That's the easiest way to do it. Now, before I finish this cut, on the longer workpiece, I bring up a finished leg. Certainly don't turn it on. I bring up a stop, and that's 30 inches long right there. And this is exactly how I cut the compound cuts. The long point, the 60 degree point has to go out. Now watch this. It's first cut. And I bring it down to the stop. This is the second cut. Stop. And that right there is how the legs are cut and the aprons are cut. Now, back to make some more domino cuts. All right. Now with these dominoes, the loose tenon joints, these are 50 millimeter long, 10 millimeters thick. And I did the same thing on the lower aprons. That is planed with a hand plane to a eight degree angle. You'll see why in a bit. It goes into the mating domino hole here. And the key is right there to there, that's 120 degrees, complex geometry. That comes to a 60 degree point here, thus the rhombus. The key, why this doesn't have to be a compound cut of this stretcher, is because this surface right here that goes into the leg, right like that, is square to the outside 60 degree point. That's how this whole assembly comes together. So that's the lower apron. 
This is the upper apron. Slide that in. And now it's time to go put all the pieces together and glue it up. Before we do the glue up, you need to look at something. The top is joined to this bottom support here. And that's notched into the apron here and on the other side. And I have that laid out and I have marks on my apron work pieces. I used a razor saw to cut that down to my layout line, which is three quarters of an inch down. And then I can bring up this work piece and to the layout line, like so, lock this in and then bring up my chisel and chisel this away. I just put that edge right on my layout line and I walk it down. I want to stop it on each end first and just a series of cuts like this and in no time that will pop out. A little bit of hand work and then we can do the glue. It's all about the angles and putting the parts together the right way. Now this is the notched out area that the cleat for the top is going to go into and it's all lined up the right way. So this is A down and what does that mean? That means I'm going to swing this around ever so carefully and do the dry fit and make sure that everything lines up the right way. This is an equilateral triangle and there are a total of 18 dominoes, six per side. And so I'll dry fit that first, getting all the parts lined up the right way. And then from there, I'll brush out a really good water-based alphatic resin glue into the cavity, the mortise, the loose mortise as it's called. Um, it's for the tenon, which is called the domino, that slides in. And as soon as that domino hits that water-based glue, it expands ever so slightly, and that helps to lock that in. So I brush out every single domino hole, and I don't really put any glue on the dominoes themselves because it would just come right off as soon as you'd press it into these tight domino holes, the mortises. So I line that all up. And then I set it on the ground and I use two web clamps. One's metal banded, that has more holding power. And I draw the bigger low end of this together at the triangle form. And then I can put a web clamp on top and draw all those joints tight and we'll let that cure. This is a big glue up and by the time I got to that 18th domino, it had seized, so I had to use that persuader right there, a clamp, but that is nice and tight, which means the geometry all worked out. And then here's this cleat, which off of the bottom of this piece right here, screws only go in the center six inches to support it because, look at that, that's a cross grain chestnut top, so I want it to be able to expand and contract, and of course this should fit right in there like a glove. How about that? So this gets screwed here because it's long grain, it won't expand and contract, then re-screwed here, and that's how you join the top. Now last week, while this is curing out, I wouldn't dare touch it, we cut down a corkscrew willow. Time to see how this mills out. And then we'll come back and sand and finish this. In 1978, I went to forestry school. I'm working with my good friend, Dave Mosier. He's got a band mill, and we have this corkscrew willow that we harvested at our house last week. Dave's gonna be on in just a second, but we're trimming this off because this Woodmiser G24 
needs a little bit extra clearance. More on that with Dave in a second, but I'll get this trimmed up and we'll be sawing. <laughs> In this neck of the woods, you're looking at a legend, Dave Mosier. And the reason, Dave, you're my hero, the reason for that, he's saving more trees than anybody else in Miami County. And this is with Urban Timber Mill. Urban Timber Mill. Okay, and look at this. We planted this tree 15 years ago. I know, Susie was getting a little teary-eyed when you were cutting it down. Yeah, but I couldn't go on the house with that lightning strike. But you have a saying about ugly logs. Well, I've always said that the best looking lumber comes out of the ugliest looking logs. And I think uh, we've proven that today. <laughs> well, and look at this. When you price live edge slabs, look at that. We're going to finish this down and it's going to become a display table. All sorts of character in here. Now, give us some pointers. I I'm paying Dave to mill this, but you will take this to a site within yep. travel distance? Uh, I will travel, I usually, I've gone as far as 80 miles. Okay, so. and we're in Troy, Ohio, okay. Yep. So and I usually cover most of Dayton, North Cincinnati, and I've gone uh, close to Columbus before. So on the stump, this was 38 inches, so you had to use some chainsaws. Yeah, the limit of the mill is 36 inches. Okay. Now this was 38, but it was kind of an odd 38. Right. So with a little trimming, it wasn't too bad. Are you calling my trees odd? Uh, no, not at all. Okay. No. <laughs> well, we'll let you get back to it. This is exciting. Okay, so this will be a live edge display table, and we'll just have to get you to kiln it for us. No problem. Okay, thank I you, Dave. That. This all is right. awesome. Here back at the wood shop, it's payday, which means everything's been sanded to perfection, and I'm popping the shelves in that were cut out on the bandsaw, and voila, look at this. This is spectacular. I'm loving it. Grain running this way on the top, that way on the base. I like the accent of mahogany there. This is 100% recycled. Now, you have choices in life. Is it interior or exterior? If it's exterior, we would use exterior 450. But for interior, I like Arm R Seal. And it's been tacked thoroughly, sanded thoroughly. And right there, bam! That accent stripe of that chestnut mahogany with quarter sawn white oak with that beautiful American chestnut top. You just can't beat that. So I'll get this brushed out. We'll take a look at the finished project. Well, there it is. Look at that beautiful chestnut top. And when you rotate this table around, every side has a different story to tell. And it all started with this cricket table that goes back centuries. Mine's a little bit taller. Of course, all American woods, this is English yew. It has some powder post beetle damage on it, but that just goes with the territory. Treat it with shell guard. Well, that's it for this week. I think Susie's really gonna like this. We'll get three more coats on this, and it'll be ready to head home. Well, go have some fun in your wood shop and make beautiful things, and don't buy anything for anyone. Make it. See ya. Woodcraft, since 1928 providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Pro Tools. 
for Tool Pros. Rikon Tools. Woodcraft Magazine. Projects, plans, and web links. Designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood. Home of Timberwolf Swedish Silicon Steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on. A table to share meals. A house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. Providing furniture to neighbors in need. For more information on tips behind the American Woodshop and watch free episodes 24-7, check us out online and like us on Facebook.